Hello. Today in this video, we are going to cover some common issues when troubleshooting the contains string function in Tableau. My name is Jay, and we are responding to a lot of common questions that come up in our community forums with this video. So hopefully this creates a central uh, area where you can learn and begin to troubleshoot. So we will cover how the contains function works. And then we'll look at some real life examples of using it in practice and some of the problems you might run into, as well as when not to use the contain statement and when something else might be more appropriate. So how does the contains function work? It's pretty simple. We only have three things to think about. First is the word contains and then a string and a substring. Essentially, what we are creating is a question which asks of our data, does the string contain the substring? So as an example, we have uh, in caps here contains calculation comma ALCU and we are asking, does the word calculation contain the letters ALCU? And in this case, it's true. So Tableau would tell us that yes, that's true. Now, that might be a little abstract, even though it is pretty small, pretty uh, small building blocks, but let's look at it in practice. So here we have a situation where as someone who cares about the Tableau community, I want to sift through all of my data and only look at our URLs that have community.tableau.com. And what I've done is I've created a calculated field using a contain statement. And what I've done is I've said, if we look at the URL field, I want to know if it contains the word community. And we have a couple of things that pop up. So number three and number four do contain community, which means that they are true. However, so do number one and number five show up which are not actually related to community.tableau.com. So they're showing up because they contain the word community somewhere else. In this instance, I have a correctly functioning contained statement, but it's not functioning quite the way that I want it to. So here, all I would really do to fix this is I know that uh, there's some other characters, some other phrases and keystrokes that can help me be more specific. So if I just add a period, community dot tableau and I hit apply, we should see that number five and number one are now false because while they do contain the word community, they don't also contain dot tableau like number three and number four do. So that is one way that you might run into a problem where you have thought about the word, but not necessarily everything around the word that might also be a part of what you want to identify. So in our second issue here, uh, this is actually coming directly from our forums. So I like this one quite a lot. We have a user who has been looking at a code, a string of numbers and ID, and is trying to parse out uh, what each of these different codes might, might mean to their, their business case. So what they've done is they've created a contained statement that says if our ID contains 201, then let's label it as a fact. And if that's not true, then we'll check another contained statement using an if then clause here. And if our ID contains 401, then we'll say it's an email. So as we look at our data, we see that our top two IDs here have 201 in them. So they should and are labeled as facts. However, our next two have 401. And we know as a business user that 401 here should mean that it's an email and not a fax. So this is not working correctly. What's actually happening here is that our substring 201 is hidden within this string. So when we think about our numbers or words, sometimes we're thinking about them like humans, like this is the number, uh, this is 401, this is 2017. Those are different things. However, in this example, 2017 actually has 201 in it. So our 
contain statement up here is actually true because our ID contains 201. It just happens to be 2017. So what we would actually have to do here to differentiate is specify with some space marks. So we've got uh, spaces, periods, commas, at symbols, other letters and numbers. All of these things can be strings if we're looking at a string field. So if we go ahead and hit apply, we should see that these two are now correctly registering as email instead of fax. So that's a very, very common thing where we sort of think the way that we semantically think as humans and we look at uh, complete ideas within a string instead of what the computer is actually going to look at, which is just the literal letters or numbers of a string. So in our third example, we've got something a little bit different where we've got a list of countries here. So not codes, not URLs, a list of countries from the Americas, both North and South America. And in our data set, we don't actually identify if a country is from North America or South America. So in our use case here, we are trying to identify that. Now in our forms, uh, we would have someone asking a question saying, hey, I've got this contained statement here and it's not working and I don't know why. Where what they've tried to do is say, well, I want to look at my countries and I want to know if my country field contains Colombia, Ecuador, Paraguay, Peru, or Uruguay. And they're using or to signify that they're looking for different variations of this. Now, unfortunately, we've got an error. Uh, Tableau doesn't like this because it's not actually following our contains string and substring formula. We've got contain string and then multiple substrings where we can only really put one in. So while this feels like it should work, it doesn't actually function the way that we want it to. Instead, what we would have to do and what we've done over here in a different calculated field is actually write out every single different or statement as a new contains statement. So we've got our country contains Colombia. And then we basically copy and paste that a handful of times using an or statement. So if Colombia or Ecuador or Paraguay or Peru, et cetera, uh, then we'll say that's South America. And if it's not, then we say it's North America. So this works, right? This is correct. Um, and it would correctly identify our North and our South American countries. Now, the thing about that is it's a little cumbersome because we've got to write out the same thing over and over again. So another way we could approach this is by creating a entirely different kind of calculated field where instead of using contains, we're actually going to use case and in. So we're not using contains here, but we're doing something that functions the way that we expected it to work before. We're essentially now we're saying, um, if we find any of these strings in our country field, then it's true and we want to flag it as South America. So this also works. Both of these two things are correct. And we can even uh, have both of these calculated fields in our, view, in our view at the same time. So here we can drag this on and we can see yeah, North America, it's blue, it's highlighted, South America, same thing. Both of these are correct. And when you have a lot of different strings that you want to uh, be thinking about all at once, it might be more useful to use a case and in function instead of a contains function. It can just be a little more easy to work with uh, because you're using fewer lines and fewer functions. So finally, we've got one last example, and this is Another example where we might use a contains statement, but it might also not be correct. So we are again looking at some URLs related to Tableau. And what we want to find here is what language does the URL signify? So language codes like JA-JP or DE-DE, so Japan and German, are things that you might find in URLs as a global company, we have to deal with a lot of these sorts of things. 
Now, what we've done here is a version of what we've already been doing. So we've got our if contains statements where we want to see if a URL contains ja-jp, then we will create a new field and we'll identify that as ja-jp. And we can copy and paste and do the same thing that we just did. So we could also, like we just did, use a case in solution here. But what we're really looking for is the pattern. That's what matters more than anything else. So we've got three different versions, German, French, and Japanese here. But if we know that we might have 50 of these, instead of writing out 50 different variations of this, we might actually use a regular expression or regex for short. Now regex is a little more confusing uh, and we're not gonna go into it a ton right now, but a regular expression helps identify patterns within a string. So if we know the pattern we're looking for is slash letter letter dash letter letter dot uh, slash, then we can write out this complicated gobbledygook uh, of letters and strings that regular expressions need. And this whole thing is really just one function that can identify and pull out any time we find that exact pattern. And that's what we're actually doing here, is we are looking at what that exact pattern is and writing it. So that's an example where we might not use a contained statement, or we could use a contained statement. And it's really up to what the uh, problem is that we're trying to solve. So those are a couple of examples and some common ways that you might troubleshoot using the contain statement and working with strings in Tableau. So thank you. Definitely leave a comment if you have any additional questions or ask a question in the community forums.